Perhaps you've seen one of Theo Jensen's uh, large creations. He calls them uh, strand beast. Uh, they're these wind-powered creations made from plastic tubes. That doesn't sound like very much, but they really are beautiful things to watch. They, they are powered along by the wind and he usually puts them out on a beach where there's a lot of a lot of air movement and these things walk along by themselves some of them crawl they're, they're really amazing things okay so I bought my son a model of one of his his uh, strand beasts and we are going to be putting it together and we have some tips and tricks that will make it easier these things are <laughs> rather complex and without some of these tips and tricks it's uh, nearly impossible to assemble one of these models the instructions that came with this particular model are kind of marginal, but this is these are some of the parts over here. Parts go on over here on this page. Uh, there's a million billion parts, and the instructions that begin over here. They are not really clear. Sometimes they're vague. Sometimes they're downright misleading. Uh, my son builds models. Uh, he likes these Gundam things, so he does a pretty good job with those. Those are rather complex. He's been struggling with this, so that kind of gives you a level of comparison. Um, but let me give you some ideas. We've already gotten started. Uh, that's how I know it's complex and how I needed to and why I needed to make this video. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's start with that and uh, show you some of the things we did to help move this along. There are 12 legs in most of these strand kit models and this kit starts out by having you put this little friction piece into this portion of the leg. These four components right here will make up one leg. So you'll have to assemble four of these these four pieces 12 times. So the first one has this like little rubber thing in here that's the foot. It goes into the A piece and the next to it's the B piece. And then over here this big connecting rod is the C piece and the last one is the D piece. And assembling these four will make one leg. Again, there are 12 of those. So let me show you a, an assembled leg. This is one assembled leg. This is the A component. You can recognize that by the uh, foot right here. The piece over here, this triangle, is the B component. This large connecting rod right here is the C component and this smaller connecting rod is the D component. Now the first trick here is to get yourself some stiff wire and wire these together because these are like they have a lock on them and when the plastics in a certain position that lock will come undone. These come undone real easily and if you're trying to juggle this and hold it together uh, it'll just keep falling apart in your hands. That was our first struggle. So I just got some stiff wire and I locked these together Parts of it will still fall apart as you're uh, working with it. If you move it into the wrong position, they will come apart like this. But uh, these locking these pieces here with a wire make it a lot easier. Something to notice on these connecting rods. See this side? There's like a little depression in it, and this side is flat. The side with the depression is the side that goes here where these ears are. Let's see if I can get those ears clear. Yeah, see the ears sticking out? So the side with the depression is the side that will go with the ears on it. If you try to put it on the other way, you'll find that it probably won't go. It'll lock and it won't move. So, yeah, you'll uh, need to put it on like this, flip it over and then you'll find it has a full range of motion. Now what we're going to do next, we're going to take this crankshaft and we're going to snap it into one of these A-frames. Like that. And what's going to happen is our legs are going to mount on here and here. There's going to be two legs. So this side and this side. And then, through some connecting rods, we're going to attach connecting rods from the legs onto here. There's two connecting rods per leg, and there's two legs, so there'll be four connecting rods on this journal of the bear, on the uh, journal of the crankshaft. So here's what we're going for. 
this is the crankshaft. These are two legs in place. Let me turn it around the other side. And you can see here's the A-frame. And here's where we snapped in the crankshaft. This is one leg here, and it's got two connecting rods. Here's another leg over here with two connecting rods. And when we turn the crankshaft, you can see the legs walking. So this is where we're going to go. This is our goal, is to get one set of these. And then we will, what we will do is we'll create six sets of these, and then they snap together as units, as modules. Here we are with our A-frame and our crankshaft. And what we're going to do is we are going to put one of these legs, see the big hole in the leg right there? We're going to put that on this pin right there. And this will try to fall apart right here at this joint. But we're going to put on two connecting rods. One of them is going to go from here, and that will help hold this joint together up to this journal. And then we're going to put the other one from here to that same journal, and then that leg will be on there. Now, I haven't been able to do this on camera, so I will go off and I will get it kind of set up and then come back. Here are the two type of connecting rods that are used. This straight one is the one that goes on top towards the pinnacle of the A-frame. And this one, this curved one, it goes on this bottom joint to the uh, journal. So that's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go put those on there and then I will show you, come back and show you what I've got. So this is the upper straight one, and I got it wired in place, so hopefully it won't fall loose. And then I'm going to snap it onto this journal. There we go, click, and that's the top one. Now let me go get the bottom one and put it on there, and we'll kind of do the same thing. This is the bottom curved one, and it goes on here. Let's see if I got it locked on there. Yes, I got it on here like this. And then I will go up and snap it on the journal in the same place. Can you see that? It's on the same place. Click. So now this one leg is in position. And I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side as a mirror image. And those two connecting rods from this side will also go on that same uh, journal of the crankshaft. And now what I've done is I have merely put the left side on, just a mirror image of the other side we just did. So here's the straight crank, uh, connecting rod rather going to the crank, straight going to the crank. This is the curved one underneath going to the uh, journal of the crank, and this is the other side. So they're exactly just a mirror image of each other. Notice I have them wired in place because otherwise this thing will just fall apart in your hands continuously. Um, it's working. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way and show you like that. So this is working. Uh, this pair of legs will be finished off when we put another frame, another A-frame right here, and that pair will be done, and then we'll just repeat the process for the other legs on this particular connecting rod. There's two sets of these which will be mated, and then a good chunk of the complex part of this model will be done. With these curved arms, I just found out something else. You can put them on there wrong. There's a smooth side. Can you see this? One side is smooth and the other side, see, has that ridge on it? The smooth sides have to connect to the uh, crankshaft like this. Smooth side to smooth side like I've got it. See the bumps on that side like that, bumps on that side. So it's got to be smooth side to smooth side. If it has like bump to bump or whatever, they will collide and it does not work. So, uh, yeah, when you're putting these on the connecting rod, make sure that the smooth sides of these are together. The other one doesn't seem to have that problem, just these curved ones. I've removed my two safety wires from here and here. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this A-frame in here. And the only trick to this is one side is male and the other side is female. I need to make sure that, that the male lines up with the female on that side. So, um, 
and then I will just snap it into position on the crank shaft so get that there get that lined up uh, snap that down there we go get those pieces lined up that lined up push them into place check to make sure my crank is all good and there we have another segment done And now what I'm going to do, I won't show all these others, I'm just going to repeat this same thing with the legs, adding pairs of legs along the uh, crankshaft. And once that's done, I will be back and show you what we have. This is one of the two segments, the two crank segments of six legs, uh, three pair each. And you can see there, one, two, three pair. Um, functional. Make sure nothing's dragging. Spin it around and make sure nothing is dragging. That's how I caught the fact that uh, those lower connecting rods had uh, had to be positioned a certain way. So there it is. Okay. So now I'm going to go repeat that for the other uh, six legs, other three pair. Now we have our two sets of legs assembled. We need to join them. They have this little spline right here, and that matches up with this. The only thing they said is make sure that when you join these, that the legs are not in the same position. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that, but they said if it is, rotate it 180 degrees so it would not be. And you need to put this band on here. So we kind of fold it up over like this. And then when we put it together, we're going to stretch it across both of these to hold it. So, let me see if I can do this. Um, no, I could not do it and keep it on camera. Okay, so anyway, I've pushed these together. I put the splines together. That's kind of loose fitting. The legs do not appear to be in exactly the same pattern. I've got this band on here. They told me to fold it over. So I go on one end like this, loop it over on one end, then stretch it to the other end. And my guess is that's just to hold this top piece together. Now let's look on the instructions and see what's next. Now they want us to put these metal rods here and these two end holes right there. Let's see if the ends are, this end feels better. And I guess we just push it all the way through there. Leaving a little bit out on each end they said. Okay, that was easy enough. So we have the band and these two metal rods to help hold it all together. Then we put on these stoppers, they call them, just on these end pieces. And there's six of them. Like this. And then on this end. Two, three, and that's that. Okay, what's next? And now we'll make room to set up the propeller. What we're supposed to do now is take these blades, they have two holes in them, put them on here, and then use these little stoppers to lock these in place. And these little, I don't know whatever you want to call them, holders, they're beveled on one side, and this is slanted right here. So you want that bevel to line up with the slant so it holds these uh, firmly in place. And 
these are a challenge to my eyesight. There goes one. Let's see if I can get that on there. Like that, like that. And then I'll go do the others, and then we'll be right back. And there it is completed. Let's see what we have to do next. Now what I'm supposed to do is insert this thing in here and twist it so that it locks. Okay, got that right. Now, oh, by the way, we're on the end that has the hole. So this is the female end of this spline shaft that's on the crank. We take the smaller of the two gears and we mount it on here like that. Okay. Now we snap this big gear onto this protruding piece we just put on there earlier. Oh, I didn't want to go on there easily. Okay, get it to mesh with the lower gear. Ah, ta-da, okay. And then my guess is we put on the windmill part. Okay. And our last piece is to put a windmill up here on top of that using this spike and we have gears on here and it says to leave about one to two millimeters and we don't have it well engaged okay there we go so now we need to go off and give it a test. They supply this test stick that you can use to test it. Okay, but let's try it with air.